Hey guys, on with the show. Here I am. Yep. On with the show. Uh, now you're saying something that you're not really familiar with. Introducing ChatGPT. So this is OpenAI, artificial intelligence. Not a wonderful idea. I'm drinking water, by the way. Fresh, refreshing, cold tap water. I had a crazy idea. Why don't we try and use ChatGPT to play a Starry Kit scenario? And the Starry Kit scenario that I used uh, was a long way to go, scenario S11, the Biscari Station uh, uh, battle, Sicily, 10th of July, 1943. And the reason why I've chose this is I, I've done some simple experimentation with this particular scenario, and then I turned it over to ASL scenario S12, and it did provide me with some some results that kind of made sense to some extent, and there are some errors. And according to the um, according to the um, uh, license agreement, you have to tell what the mistake is to to the bot in order for it to become better next time. I did that to the best of my ability. But after experimenting uh, with it two times and getting somewhat mixed results, I, um, I said to myself, I'm going to try again and give it a more detailed um, example, and that being a small scenario like ASL 11, but the instructions are going to be a little bit more involved. I just want to see what it spits out, what, what will be the output. And um, let me to give you an idea of what I did here. I'm going to go to my uh, Notepad++, and uh, I, of course you cannot give the bot the entire rule book in the form of a text. So basically what I outlined here was um, what it is. It's a game, start a kit, and what scenario it is, S11. Then I outlined the OB. I gave it a couple of characteristics uh, with respect to what these counters represent, the firepower, range, and morale. Uh, in addition, the same thing for the leader and the support weapons. A lot of brief notes. It looks like a lot, but it isn't. Then um, I created a simple ASCII 2 map uh, with a little compass, north, east, south, and west. The legend, so little O is an orchard, big O is open ground. The movement factor cost, big W is woods, small W is a building, H is a level one hill. And that's the beauty about starter kit is that it's not as complicated as as um, full ASL with snipers and different types of terrain um, and blind hexes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Here you either have line of sight or you don't. Uh, S for stone building, R for paved road, little R for unpaved road. And where I got that idea from was back in the 80s when computer war games first came out. Everything was an ASCII 2 characters. There was nothing as fancy as a, as a hex grid. We're talking about early 1980s, mid 1980s, the whereabouts were. You had to put, you had to put the program in a cassette player and then read it into your Coco 4 or Coco 3 color computer. If you're more rich, you had an IBM or IBM compatible. Anywho, uh, computers evolved quite a long way. So here's here's more or less the map, and we're talking about the little red area that's the playable area only. And then I gave it some instructions. Um, the game lasts six and a half turns. Each player alternates being the attacker, starting with the Germans. Each time each player has taken a turn being the attacker, a game turn expires and you go on to the second turn and then you win by exiting on this side of the board actually that side of the board when I'm looking at your perspective right that side of the board and um, you need to ascertain certain victory points and then I said here are the instructions fourfold uh, provide initial locations where the US player can best set up to stop the Germans from advancing uh, in my initial uh, request, I said, as per U.S. military doctrine. I can add that. As per World War II U.S. military 
doctrine. And then here, I can put as per the word to uh, ver. I'm not too sure how to spell a ver mark. Ver. I'm poor in German. I just checked and I got it right. As per Wehrmacht military doctrine. There you go. And then given the German advance provide the best course of action for the Americans um, defend retreat scope for the subsequent for the sub sequent turn. Uh, then uh, instruction number four, repeat steps A to C until all 6.5 game turns have expired. I'm not asking you to resolve the, um, the, the firefight um, uh, outcome, because I just wanted to run uh, and see what you'll spit out. And then maybe I can take that outline that it spits out and just play it on Vassal and see what happens. So what do we do next is we'll do a control A and control C. We'll save this there. And this is Notepad++. And then go to chat GPT, log in, and go to chat GPT, which is an interactive AI language, and it can help you. It can help you pro provide you with code as well. So here's some of the examples that I did, and I'm going to send a message. I'm just going to Control V and type everything in there, and everything looks like hell. But I, I'm guessing that um, it's going to make sense out of it. So now you just click here, see what happens. Oh, here's uh, my message. It says, oh, look at that. Well, here's what you got. Let's see what uh, the AI spat out. Okay. Based on World War II U.S. military doctrine, the initial locations for the U.S. player to set up and stop the Germans from advancing would be as follows. Place a 9-1 leader and one elite squad 747 in hexagon E5. Uh, E5. Let's, uh, let's go and see what happens. E5. So he, chat GPT says, one elite, one minus minus, nine minus one liter there are in E5. Okay, great. And let's go back. This provides a central location with good defensive coverage. Place the 8-0 leader and one elite squad in hexagon Foxtrot 5. Foxtrot 5. Where the heck is Fox Strike 5? Where is like Fox Strike 5? How about my ASCII 2 map? Does it have a Fox Strike 5? I guess it's mistaken Fox FF5 for Fox Strike 5. So, 8 all leader, 7 best leader there, right in the open. Okay. Let's go back to chat GPT. This provides support to the central defense and covers and flanking elements. Place one first line squad, 666, in hexagon D5. So I'm guessing that would be here. Now I think it um, it's probably considering this side of the board as the 
northmost. Uh, it didn't read the compass directions that I put in there. Oh well. Uh, let's go back to chat GPT. Providing additional support for the central defense. Place one first line half squad 346 in D6, covering the left flank. D6. Oh, I see. It, it, it has mistaken north, east, and south, and west. I don't know why. All right, let's go back. Place one first line half squad in hex echo six covering the right flank. I'm not too sure. Oh man, A, B, C, D, E6. Now we, we kind of see where everything is falling into place, but D6? D6 is there as well, and D5 would be here. F6, there is no F6. There is no F6. Let's leave them in there for a second. Let's go back to chat GPT. Distribute the remaining squads along the central and flanking positions to provide overlapping fields of fire and mutual support. Okay. Well, as you can see, it's covering this line as a rear defense, and I can picture that. I can put this fellow here, Now it's kind of letting me take care of this thing. And I suppose I can do this. And I'll give Green a support weapon because he's in close proximity to to a, 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 a building. And um, now I'd probably move this guy here. Anywho, let's go on to the German side. For the German player, enter on uh, enter the board and advance while considering we were to Wehrmacht military doctrine. The best locations would be as follows. Enter from the north side of the board, hexagons U1 to U10, with the 9 minus 1 leader and the strongest squad, 467 and 447 squads. Advance in a staggered formation using the available cover um, building sills or orchards to minimize exposure to enemy fire. Now, what, what do they mean by staggered uh, formation? Squad staggered formation. Let's check out our some images here. Oh, I see. Phalanx. All right. Let's go back here and see what's going on. So I would ideally like to have crop advance with a four six seven. It told me, you know, advance with uh, a staggered formation and and go up here come into there, uh, use cover, and maybe uh, there. Uh, Mueller, Steiner would take uh, Steiner would like to go up here and give him a couple of squads that are good and hardy. Mueller, Mueller deserves some uh, respect as well. Up 
we're going to give him some more uh, good order troops. What are you doing, George? Put that super weapon on top of the squad. There you go. And here we go. And then we'll put some squads all over the place. Squads galore. just put them all over the place here because the AI said so uh, put him there put the good order squad there another good order squad here staggered I suppose this is staggered <laughs> yeah okay And I completely ignore the um, support weapons. It's very general. Here we go. Let's go back to ChatGPT. Use the leaders to rally broken troops and provide additional fire support. Assign these support weapons, MMG, LMG, to squads to enhance their firepower and provide suppressive fire. Maintain and flexible information to exploit any gaps in the U.S. defense. Uh, adjust the advance based on the situation on the ground. C. Based on the German advance, best course of action for the American player would depend on the specific circumstances and tactical situation. However, some guidelines for subsequent actions could be. I need a glass of water. Defend if the initial U.S. defense holds strong and inflicts significant casualties on the advancing Germans. It may be beneficial to continue defending the current positions, reinforce areas of weakness, and maintain overlapping fields of fire to maximize defensive effectiveness. Retreat if the German advance overwhelms a particular sector or threatens to flank the U.S. positions, a tactical retreat may be necessary. Withdraw to more defensible, defensible positions and establish a new defensive line. Delay the Germans and force them to expose themselves to concentrate defensive fire. Skulk if the German advance becomes too aggressive and the U.S. Uh, defense is under heavy pressure, adopting a skulk strategy may be prudent. Minimize exposure to enemy fire, use cover effectively, and focus on disrupting the German advance through ambushes, sniping, and hit run tactics. Avoid direct confrontations uh, whenever possible. Ultimately, the best course of action would depend on evolving battlefield situation, the strength and disposition of both forces, and the overall strategic objectives of the American player. Adaptability and flexibility are key to, in responding to German advances and finding opportunities to exploit their weaknesses. Let's ask it um, specifically from which hex should hexes, hexagons, hexagons, hexagons? Should each German unit advance from uh, given the map provided? Let's see what happens here now. Based on the Oh. All right, so what what what's going on here now? Uh, Panzer Grenadier Regiment 1, BB-8. The hexagon provides central starting position and follows for flexibility in advancing towards southern exit hexagons, BB-8.
That's smack in the middle of, of the grain field. Okay. And BB9, another central starting position that allows for multiple avenues of advance. BB7, the hexagon provides, all right, CC7, CC8, CC9. EE8, EE, that's open ground. And that's all the way on the uh, board where um, where uh, you're already in the game. The game has started. So um, can can you assign constructively constructively That's how you spell it. Can can you assign? Uh, can you assign constructively each German unit a a jump off point a jump off point uh, along the hexagons? And I misspelled it in my in my um, misspelled hexagons and. In my uh, instructions to it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, along uh, hex row, hex row, is that one word or two words? Hexagon row U1 to U10. Thank you. Gotta be very polite. Surely, jump off point, U5. The hexagon provides a good starting position, U4. Okay, hold, hold on now. There we go. Leaders, jump off point, U5. The hexagon provides a central starting point. Great. All right. Now, leaders, jump off point. U4, the hexagon provides a good starting point for a leader to coordinate the advance along the row U and support nearby units. So let's put a leader in U4. Where do I put him? I put him in U4. Well, I could have put... My nine, nine, nine minus one there, and my uh, eight minus one here, I suppose. Let's see here. Jump off points. U, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, first line squads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that's more or less what I did. Except, yeah, uh, some of the poor squads I put in the outlining periphery of the line. Second line squads, U1 to U10. So he, he's pretty much, the, the chatbot is pretty much saying, okay, these boys come up here, these boys are there so it's not stacking and it's covering the whole friggin line the whole kid and caboodle wow. and um, all right okay first line squad second line squads okay it's going a little berserk I, I think I gave it more information than needed to generate something now let's ask it again um, uh, another question with the US uh, uh, units. Can you assign the initial defensive positions for the US units given given assign the initial defensive positions uh, positions for the US units providing the hex coordinate 
for each unit, okay, given that the German Germans will attack from hex row U, 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 and advance to the right toward hex row E. As an echo. Let's see if it changes its mind. Certainly there is an assignment. E5, E6, E7, E4, E3, artillery battery, <laughs> E2, E8. So it's a it's it's suggesting that I think what it's suggesting is just go all the way towards the rear. Well, quite honestly, I, I thought that it would give me a better outcome than this, but uh, let's see if I recorded my other session with this uh, tool. Uh, here. Here it was giving me more specific uh, hexes, and as you can see, this was for the Germans. Up here was for the Germans, and let's take a look. Oh, this is for the other scenario. All right, so here is for the other scenario as well. So that was the scenario. Uh, 12 and I was giving it in terms of a map reference this stuff here something similar but not quite the same previous seven days it keeps um it keeps a record of everything that you do you won all right I think this should be for the uh, this area here. Yeah, yeah. So here, here's what I asked it the first time. The map indicates the following terrain from north to south. The map is composed of hexagons where one is adjacent to another. In other words, each hexagon uh, borders another. The terrain is as follows, starting with the northmost hex to the southernmost hex. All locations um, were noted on level one hill and then I gave it more wordy description of the uh, map, and then subsequent to that, it gave me 747, the first number is firepower, okay, oh, wait a second, this is what it gave me, uh, Y7, one elite unit in Y7, so an initial um, explanation that it gave me, uh, let's take a look at that again, uh, Y7, I think it was a 747 squad in Y7. Here, right there. And then let's go back, uh, covering the road and providing good line of sight. Uh, place the second lead squad in Z Zebra 6. Let's do that. Zebra 6. Right there, okay. Here, okay. And then first line 666 and half squads deploy uh, two first line squads in V9 Orchard. And this time it was, it was asking me to um, stack. Like so, and then 
taking advantage of the cover for OK, and place one half squad in BB5 Orchard Pave Road, at least it got the uh, locations right. There you go. And let's go back to the chat. Place, did I skip one? No, V9, and W9, per, place one first line squad at W9 Orchard on the third row, taking advantage of the cover provided behind the orchard, W9. All right, so let's go on W9. Here. All right. Let's go back to the chat bot here. And then place a half squad in BB5. I did that already. Uh, let's see. The other half squad in uh, CC6. Like so. And now this is a more plausible um, uh, set up. And then W7, I placed the leader separately. He wasn't supposed to do that. So we can go ahead and place some leaders here and there. Okay, I would put my best order leader and a bazooka here. Like so. I put this dude here. I put this fellow here. And actually, with the um, other half squad, I would probably place it here and put Barnes up there. Now, that's a bit more plausible, although I've left this area open. Um, what am I doing? Let's go here. Although I've left this area open, you can see that if, if he doesn't try to, if the German player doesn't try to expel the German, the Americans from here, his option, his other option would be to run the gauntlet through the open ground between CC1 and uh, GG5, uh, right? You have to excuse me this, uh, I've been having most troubles. And that would, if he tried to run the gauntlet simply uh, without engaging the American troops, um, this dude, would, or the, this, the attackers would be flanked. So, um, did I ask it any other questions? Yeah, I came even up with certain uh, uh, recommendations after I, I kind of reprimanded it and then it gave me a warning saying, you know, this is uh, part of the content policy. If you believe this is to be an error, submit your feedback. I thought I did. Now, and then it goes on to talk about how the uh, how the German player would advance, and basically it is telling you to take on uh, the American forces rather than running the gauntlet through the open ground. So that's ChatGPT for you. Far from perfect, and I think there's a disclaimer on the bottom. Free research preview, ChatGPT may produce inaccurate information about people, places, or facts. ChatGPT, May 2, 24th version. So, um, given what what is going on with ChatGPT, I think you got you to gotta, um, use the right language in order to get the right outcome, or a plausible outcome. And um, I think uh, this scenario may be worth entering into uh, uh, a war game like uh, Second Front to see how it uh, would pan out. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, get your when you design that scenario, you get uh, uh, the best possible um, setup for the 
for the uh, Americans, let the AI be the defender and you be the attacker. So uh, maybe something to work on. Um, that chat GPT thing gave me a headache. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And um, be well and stay away from AI, I think. That's the best course of action.